on this episode of Peak. Dennis Ovens, a new cousin at the Homo family reunion. In the Altai Mountains of southwestern Siberia, in a location near the Russian border with Kazakhstan, China, and Mongolia, lies a small cave. The cave was naturally formed in limestone and is tucked into the mountainside near the right bank of the Anhui River. It has a floor area of 270 meters, with a large central chamber and small side galleries. Aside from being situated in a picturesque location, the cave seems pretty unremarkable. Seems. As it happens, this cave is an archaeological, anthropological, and even genetic gold mine having provided shelter for a fascinating set of characters across a span of 125,000 years. Yep, 125,000 years. Named after the last known resident, a hermit called Dennis, who lived in the cave in the 18th century, the Dennis of a cave has yielded artifacts in recent years that have completely changed how we view our hominid ancestors and how we view ourselves. That's where the genetics comes in. More on that later. The first scientific examination of the Denisova cave took place in the 1970s, when Soviet scientists uncovered paleoarchaeological remains that led to further excavations. Among the artifacts uncovered by the Soviet crews were flint tools attributed to Neanderthals, decorative objects of bone, mammoth tusk, ostrich eggshell, stone, and green chlorite. They also discovered the remains of ancient reptiles, 50 species of birds, and over 60 species of mammals, several of which are now extinct, such as the cave lion and cave hyena. Yikes, look at this guy. These findings provided evidence that the cave had been inhabited by Neanderthals, modern humans, otherwise known as Homo sapiens sapiens, and a couplet of other animals over the course of those 125,000 years. But that's not even the cool part. The Denisova cave wasn't done yielding its treasures. In 2008, archaeologist Michael Shunkov from the Russian Academy of Sciences and scientists from the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnology of Novosibirsk held another excavation. During this dig, the team discovered a small finger bone thought to belong to a young woman. They named her X-Woman. The team also found two teeth belonging to two other individuals. That same year, the finger bone was handed off to a team of scientists led by Johannes Krauss and Svante Pabo from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany. Along with researchers from Harvard Medical School, the team was able to extract DNA samples of exceptional quality, given the age of the bone. Thanks to the cool climate at the Denisova cave, the DNA was extremely well preserved and was sequenced by the team. By 2010, the DNA had yielded its results. The team announced that the finger bone had indeed belonged to a juvenile female who had lived about 41,000 years ago. Analysis of the girl's DNA showed her to be a member of the genus Homo, like us, but genetically distinct from Neanderthals and modern humans. This girl was a relative that we didn't know we had. The team named this new, but still very extinct, species of humans Denisovans, or the Denisova hominins. The two teeth found in the cave were later also determined to be Denisovan and were likely from two other members of the same population. Because the girl's DNA was so well preserved and contained such a low level of contamination, the team was able to accomplish a near complete sequencing of the genome, allowing them to do detailed comparisons of the Denisova DNA to the two other homo species we currently have DNA for, Neanderthals and modern humans. This comparison showed the following. Denisovans and Neanderthals shared a common ancestor 640,000 years ago. Modern humans, Denisovans and Neanderthals, shared a common ancestor 804,000 years ago. 
Some scientists think this common ancestor may have been Homo heidelbergensis. And here's the interesting part. The team cross-checked the Denisovan genome with the DNA sequences from Neanderthals and 11 modern humans from around the world and asserted that we've all got a little caveman in us. Three to 5% of the DNA of people of New Guinea, the indigenous populations of Australia, and the Aboriginal people of the Philippines is Denisovan DNA. Approximately 4% of the DNA of most modern humans is Neanderthal DNA. So, when you call your ex-boyfriend Steve a Neanderthal, you could be 4% correct. The question is, how did this happen? The scientists analyzing the DNA believe that humans interbred with Denisovans and Neanderthals at a time when all three groups still existed on the planet. It should be noted that some scientists dispute this conclusion, saying that Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA in the human genome could be left over from that ancient common ancestor I mentioned earlier. Either way, this is some interesting stuff. Data from the Max Planck Institute team also suggests that modern humans underwent genetic changes in brain and nervous system function, including areas that govern language development, after we split from Neanderthals and Denisovans. This could help us figure out why we thrived while our closest relatives went extinct. Rasmus Nielsen, a faculty member of the Center for Theoretical Evolutionary Genomics, sounds like a cool place to work, had been working for years to determine how Tibetans are able to withstand the effects of hypoxia in low oxygen environments. In 2010, his team published a paper identifying the EPAS1 gene as the key behind this beneficial Tibetan ability. EPAS1 regulates the body's reaction to low oxygen environments and allows Tibetans to produce less hemoglobin and fewer red blood cells. Nielsen compared Tibetan DNA to other human groups and couldn't find anyone else with a gene in the entire Homo sapien population. He'd even examined Neanderthal DNA and found no correlation. He was mystified. When the Denisovan data was released that same year, Nielsen decided it couldn't hurt to check that genome as well. And it's a good thing he did. He discovered that X women also possessed the EPAS1 gene. Though Tibetans don't share the 3 to 5% Denisovan DNA of some modern human populations, they are the only modern human beings who possess that special gene a tiny trace of our long extinct relatives. This gene proved so beneficial to the population that it survived in the Tibetan gene pool over thousands of years, while so many other ancestral traits had died out. This bracelet was found in the same layer as the Denisovan bone and teeth. Dated to over 40,000 years old, this bracelet is one of the oldest pieces of jewelry ever discovered, and the oldest piece made of stone. The bracelet is made of polished chlorite, a mineral that shines black, gray, or green depending on the light. A separate bead-like stone likely hung as a pendant from a short leather strap. What's remarkable about this bracelet is its craftsmanship. The techniques used to create the bracelet had never been seen in the Paleolithic era and in fact were not seen in decorative objects until much later in the Neolithic era. This ancient craftsman drilled with an implement, probably a rasp or a boring tool, then ground and polished the stone with leathers of varying roughness. Scientists found that the speed of rotation of this drilling was rather high and the drilling precise, indicating experience and skill in the craftsman. Normally, when we think of prehistoric humans, we think of grunting cavemen with clubs does seeing this beautiful piece of jewelry, made with care by a craftsman 40,000 years ago, change your opinion? Thanks for watching Peak! If I piqued your interest, like or favorite this video, or subscribe to this channel to further cure your curiosities.